Okay, we're live here, and uh, this is my second tutoring Google hand, Hangout. The first one was just a regular Hangout, um, the kind that is not recorded, but instead I met with a student one-on-one -on -one for tutoring. So this is the first one I decided to make public, and I invited all my students, and I warned them that I'd be inviting them. And we do have exams next week, the midterm exams for my math, math classes, my algebra classes at Northwest Arkansas Community College. Um, however, I don't know if anyone's going to attend, but that doesn't matter. Having been an only child, I can keep myself entertained by doing some of the problems that they sent in. Now, you invested $3,000 in two accounts, paying 4% and 9% annual interest, respectively. If the total interest earned for the year is $170, how much was invested at each rate? Now, I have $3,000. And I'm going to divide this up into two separate accounts, one paying 4% and one paying 9%. Now, I have no idea how much is in each account. So I'm going to just say that there are X dollars in this account and Y dollars in this account. The $3,000 was split up into this many dollars and this many dollars. So I know that X plus Y is going to equal $3,000. Now, the interest is written this way, 0 0.04 times X. In other words, 4% of the of the X dollars in the 4% account and 9% of the Y dollars in the 9% account, when you add up those interest amounts will equal the total interest of $170. Now, probably most of you will want to multiply this second line by 100, multiply all three parts by 100 in order to move the decimal places over two places so that we can have 4x plus 9y equals 170 with two zeros appended because it was also multiplied by 100, so we'll have 17,000. Meanwhile, let's bring down our first equation, x plus y equals 3,000. And now I can use substitution, or I can use um, elimination. And like most people, I prefer elimination. So what I'm going to do here is move the page down, give myself some room. I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 4, and the reason for that will become clear. If I multiply the second equation by negative 4, then each of these the, the invisible one in front of the x, the invisible one in front of the y, and the 3,000 will all be multiplied by negative 4. So we will have 4x plus 9y equals 17,000. and negative 4x minus 4y equals negative 12,000.
what we've just done is we have eliminated the x's because 4x minus 4x is 0. Now we have 9y minus 4y. That's 5y. And 17,000 minus 12,000 is 5,000. When I divide both sides by 5, the coefficient of y, I'll get that the amount in account y is $1,000. So we started out with 3,000. We put 1,000. We put 1,000 here in our y account. which means we must have put 2,000 in the account that pays less, which doesn't really make sense, does it? But there may have been another reason. That's not a very neat 2,000 there. So let's go up here and say that 2,000 dollars were invested at a 4% interest rate and $1,000 was invested at the 9% rate. That's one of the homework problems we were asked about. Now, here is a combined inequality. I was asked about this, asked to do this problem. And since we'll be recording anyway, it's OK, if, even if no one is here. x plus y, let's graph x plus y equals 3. And make a little table here. All we need are two points. If x is 0, y is 3. If y is 0, x is 3. So now I will graph those two points. I'll graph 3, 0. Come on, don't give me trouble. There. And 0, 3. Na, na, na. Come on. Whoop. Whoop. There. Now I'll graph a line. I'll, I hope I'll be able to graph a line. Come on, there. OK, now the line should be straight, and it's not. But pretend. The ability to pretend will get you lots of pretend places. Pretend this line is straight. I know, it's terrible, but ignore it. Now, this we aren't just graphing the line x plus y equals 3. We're graphing the inequality x plus y is less than or equal to 3, which means I need a test point. So I will choose a test point, which is any point not on this line. And a point not on the line is 0, 0. And you will find that 0, 0 is always the easiest test point. So I choose 0, 0. And I say, gosh, I wonder if 0, 0 will give me a true answer to this inequality. x plus y is less than or equal to 3. Well, let's see. If x plus y is less than or equal to 3, then I put this 0 in for x and this 0 in for y because this is the x coordinate of the point. This is the y coordinate. I'll get 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 3, which means 0 is less than or equal to 3. Is this true? Well, I admit it's not true. Uh, uh, that 0 doesn't equal 3, OK? But it's definitely less than 3, so I'm willing to go for that. And now I'll draw some lines 
showing me which side of the line will give me true answers. Okay, now let's graph the other inequality. X is greater than or equal to 2. And what I'll graph first is the line x equals 2. All right, again, I'll, I'll choose the point 0, 0 as my test point. There is no y for this 0 to go into, but there is an x for that 0. I'll put it right there. Um, so let me go back here. Oh, I had to get points, didn't I? I'm so glad that there are erasers. I had to get two points so that, so let's forget our test point for a minute. I need to get two points so that I can graph x equals 2. Well, notice that x has to equal 2. So no matter what I put in y, x has got to equal 2. So if I choose two relatively easy numbers like 0 and 5, then I will graph the point 2, 0 and the point 2, 5. 2, 0 is right there. I'm having trouble graphing it. Come on, you silly thing. Well, anyway, there it is, right at 2. And then 2, 5 is right here. I can sneak it in. Woohoo! I snuck it in. Okay, and two. There. Okay. Now all I have to do is connect these points. Ah! Come on. Come on. Ah! Heck. Uh oh. There we go. Okay, now we're going to try this one more time. No, we're not. We're going to keep trying it. It's the best I can do. I'm on a graphics tablet here, and... That was a message coming in from one of my students explaining that he had no time to do the homework. Anyway, you're going to have to pretend this line is straight, too. That's all there is to it. Now, I'll go back to the inequality. X is greater than or equal to 2. And I will choose the point zero, 0, which is always easy. As my test point, I'll choose the x-coordinate of 0, 0. And I'll put it in my x, and there is no y to put that 0 into. Now, let's see. If we have a 0 here, what that means is that 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Is that true? No, it's false. So because a point on this side of x equals 2 gave me a false answer, I know that points over here will give me a true answer. So I'll make arrows going this way. And now notice that when I make arrows down here, the arrows down here meet the arrows coming down from there. And so we're going to end up ah, making this our shaded region. And so what this would actually look like would be here's x equals 2, uh, 
well, the line x equals 2. And here's the line x plus y equals 3. And this would be the area you would shade on my math lab. OK, I'm coming back to our screen. Here I am. And we have one viewer. And viewer, please feel free to chat if you care to do that down here. I don't know if you can see the, the cursor, but down here. This is the uh, practice exam right there. This is the practice exam. Now, here's the problem. OK. OK, here it is. I click on the pin. 6x ah, minus y equals 25. And 5y equals 6x minus 53. Now, we could certainly use substitution on this by substitu substituting easily for the letter y. And on the test, you'll just be told to, uh, to solve. And it won't matter what method you use. So, uh, but the instructions do say elimination. So that's what we're going to do. I have to rewrite this as a standard form linear equation. Now, here I've got my x's, here I've got my y's, here I've got my 25. But over here, I've got a y term, I've got an x term on the other side of the equal sign, and then I have negative 53 or minus 53. I am going to have to subtract six x from both sides so that it zeroes out over here and so that I am left with negative six x plus five y equals negative fifty three and the first equation is six x minus y equals 25. Well, now, conveniently, we can add both lines together and the x's zero out. We didn't have to multiply either line by anything. We just had to set this up as a system of standard form linear equations. Then I start eliminating. All right, I've eliminated the x's. 5y minus y is positive 4y equals, let's see, 13 minus 5 is 8. And 4 minus 2 is 2. And of course, the answer is going to be negative. Then I divide both sides by 4 and by 4. The fours cancel, leaving me with y on the left, and 4 minus 2 is 2. Yeah, how about that? Negative 7 on the right. So y equals negative 7. Now all I have to do is back solve. So let's do that. I'm going to back solve.
And that means I pick either of the original lines. So I'll take 6x minus y equals 25. I'll take negative 7, which is what y equals, and put it in for this y. So 6x minus, now careful, minus y, and y happens to be a negative number. So we'll have 6x plus 7 equals 25. I'll subtract 7 from both sides. 7 minus 7 is 0. So I'll have 6x on the left. And 25 minus 7 is 18. Divide by 6, divide by 6. And you get x equals 3. So our solution should be 3, negative 7. Let's do a quick check in the second equation. 5 times negative 7, that is 5y, equals 6x, so 6 times 3, minus 53. So we will have, and I'll have to write really small, negative, negative 35 equals 18 minus 53. And let's see, 18 minus 3 is 5. Ah, the other way around. 13, 13 minus 8 is 5, rather, and 4 minus 1 is 3. And it'll be negative. So yes, we have the right answer, 3, negative 7. So I will save this and then go back here, click on the answer box. Did it disappear? Right, it did. Okay, wait a minute now. There we go. Okay. I'll click on the box. I will click on the box. And I want to enter a point, so I will say 3. And then negative 7. And of course, it's a quiz, so it won't even tell me. But we just went on to the next question, which is this inequality complete with an instructor tip telling you how to go about answering your answers. Well, this is getting a little lengthy, and I think I'm going to stop sharing the screen. There. And I'm going to see if anybody else is there. Does And there's my dog, Ayla, uh, scratching an itch. I guess it's time for flea medicine. It's 7.35, and this started at 7, and I really don't think anybody else wants to sit here and listen. So if the viewer who's watching would like to chat, please feel free. And if not, I'm going to sign off and uh, remind my students tomorrow that they had a chance to get their questions answered. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.